from Sage Investors, and I'm here to do a quick mind map analysis of Southern Copper Company, ticker symbol SCCO. This is a stock I just recently bought, so I'm just here to kind of walk through the thought process that led me to buy uh, shares in Southern Copper. Uh, for those of you that are interested, also this uh, video can be heard in podcast form. You can download it through uh, my website, sageinvestors.ca, or through Apple Podcasts. So every time I'm looking at a company or analyzing a company, I, I like to ask questions. And every stock that I analyze, I ask the same series of questions, the same series of eight questions. And after I've answered those eight questions, I usually have a pretty good idea whether I want to kind of buy the stock or, or not buy it or even make the decision to sell it if I, if I own it. So what I'm going to walk you through here are the eight questions that, uh, that I answered when I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to buy shares in Southern Copper. So the first question I always ask is, what does the company do? Um, what are they all about? What products do they sell? What's unique about them? What's their value proposition? So when I looked at uh, Southern Copper, um, it's pretty easy to figure out. They're essentially a, uh, a copper. <laughs> they mine and produce copper uh, and produce copper. Um, they also uh, mine and produce other types of metals like silver, uh, and zinc, but it's pretty much copper is their main go-to. And one of the kind of claims, claim to fame for Southern Copper is uh, they have uh, what's known as the, uh, the largest copper reserves in the world. Uh, and they're also because uh, they've kind of developed uh, the technology to mine this uh, copper quite effectively, and they've been able to mine it at a very low cost. So, so they're uh, among the lowest cost producers uh, of copper. So that's, that's what they do. They're just uh, a mining company that uh, mines for copper, and they sell it. So. The next question that I'll ask is, okay, well, who do they compete with? Are they the only game in town with respect to copper? Are there any other major competitors out there? Um, in the case of Southern Copper, there are a few. There's a few um, global scale uh, mining companies out there. Uh, some of them are Freeport, Freeport McMoran, um, Valet, uh, BHP, Billiton, and Rio Tinto. So there's some real large players out there, uh, and uh, and uh, Southern Copper has been a company that's been managed to more than hold its own against and some of these uh, large global mining companies. And that leads to the next question: Is okay? We know what they do. We know what they produce. We know there's a fair bit of competition out there for 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 mining for materials. Um, who buys the stuff? Who buys copper? Uh, to answer that, there's quite a few areas where copper is very very important in a lot of uh, what we what we build and what we use and how we function in our society. Um, copper is quite prevalent and in demand is required in area industries like construction, uh, power, power generation, uh, electronics. Um, when you think of uh, vehicles, especially uh, um, electric vehicles. Um, when you're talking about HVAC, like uh, home uh, air conditioning systems, home heating systems. Um, it's everywhere. And just to give you a, a sense of how much copper uh, plays a role in our daily life, if you just take a typical car, a typical car will consume about 1.5 kilometers of copper wire, or, and I said another way, it takes up about 44 pounds. 44 pounds of, of, a, of, of every, each and every car contains copper. So copper is a very important material in, in our society, in how we use it. And so it leads to the question, uh, the next question I would ask is, okay, we know 
who buys these things, and obviously you know, we're dealing with infrastructure companies, car companies, uh, computer companies, um, they all need copper at some level. And the question is, do they just need it once in a while or do they need it consistently? And are they willing to buy it over and over again? And so the question, and so the answer is they, it's in constant demand. And apparently what I've been doing is I've read up is it's actually in so much demand that they are forecasting by 2020, there actually could be a shortage of copper. And so if that's the case, if there's a shortage of copper, that would mean um, there would be, you know, that could be a, a lot of upward pressure on prices. So, so far we have a, we're, we're dealing with a, a, a company that produces something, uh, material that's very much in demand, has a lot of demand, and there's a great deal of competition out there for it. So that leads then to the next question I asked, is what well, seems like a very lucrative in demand, people need copper and companies need copper and industries need copper. So that leads to the next question, which is, uh, is this company making money? Is this company creating profits, creating tangible wealth um, from selling copper? And so when we look at some of the numbers behind it, um, one of the kind of go-to metrics that I like to use is comparing a company's return on capital versus their cost of capital. And if a company's um, generating high returns on invested capital that are greater than their cost of capital, that means they're creating tangible wealth, like creating tangible economic profit. So when I looked at Southern Copper's um, returns, uh, the returns on invested capital ranged between 10 to 28% over the last three years. And when you compare it to the company's cost of capital, which is about 10%, so that means the company is definitely creating tangible capital. And the fact of the matter is actually copper prices have been a little bit, have been kind of depressed in the last few years. And so the fact of the matter is this is a company that's making uh, money in a weak market, which is something I like to see as an, as an investor, because if you can make, if a company can make money in a, in a down market, imagine what they're gonna do when the market kind of backs up. And so if they're talking about um, copper prices going back up in, uh, in the near future, then this company is, looks like appears to be pretty set up to, to really benefit from it. So uh, when you look at the revenue growth, revenues were growing at about 5% in the most recent year. Um, so it, it seems to be doing all right. It seems to be creating tangible wealth. Again, that's what we want to see as investors. Then the next thing I want to take a look at is the company's financial position. Is the company financially strong? So that will mean taking a look at their balance sheet. So when I look at a company's balance sheet, there's about three core areas I want to focus on. One is their liquidity, their ability to um, meet their short-term day-to-day uh, financing obligations. So when you look at their liquidity, the kind of go-to metric I look at is their current ratio, which looks at their company's uh, amount of current assets versus their current liabilities. And so right now, the company has three times um, the current assets versus current liability. Um, another I want to look at is I want to look at their leverage. How much debt do they, are they carrying? Uh, so in terms of leverage, I look at the company's debt equity ratio. It's at about 1.0, which is pretty high. But for a company like Southern Copper, a lot of the mining companies and a lot of the oil companies they're very capital intensive. They require lots of capital to, to sustain the business. And so it's not too surprising to see a company like uh, Southern Copper carrying a higher debt load. Um, and finally, the other area I want to look at is the quality of the company's assets. What are the, does the company carrying a lot of goodwill or intangible assets in it? So when I looked at the company's goodwill and intangibles, it's like very low to minimal. And so, which is, again, these are good things. So high liquidity, uh, high quality of assets, creating tangible wealth, creating tangible wealth, high liquidity, high quality of assets, um, in demand, uh, a lot of demand for their, for, their, for their product, for their goods. So, so far these are looking like pretty good positive things that I'm seeing with the company. And that kind of feeds into the next question because we need to, you know, as much as things look good, we have to think about what could go wrong with this business. So we need to look at the risks associated with it. So when I'm looking at the risks, uh, are there any risks associated with the company going forward? Well, there seems to be, there could be a few. And the nature is, 
um, potentially uh, for decreased demand. Um, you know, economies are very cyclical in nature, so we could see some um, fluctuations in, in the price of the goods. So it's, you know, the, the nature of the company's stock tends to be pretty much price, they're very price sensitive. So if the price of copper were to fall, then the price of tension, uh, that kind of feeds into the stock falling. Um, the other side of it too is a high US dollar. If interest rates keep going up, um, that will put upward pressure on the US dollar and that usually tends to have an inverse relationship with commodity prices. Um, and so potentially if the US dollar stays strong, it could uh, depress copper prices. Um, finally, um, as I said, one of the big purchasers or consumers of copper, and I didn't write it down here, is China. So ultimately, if the China, Chinese economy is to slow down, like some many people are saying they are, that could put a deep downward pressure on copper prices. And again, ultimately could feed into a negative uh, lower returns for, for a company like Southern Copper. Uh, so what the trigger is, and so ultimately what we need to do is in terms to mitigate these risks, it's really all about kind of watching where U.S. interest rates going. And so right now, recently, the Federal Reserve kind of hinted that it's going to um, stop increasing interest rates. And so if that's the case, um, it could, we could see a, follow, a falling U.S. dollar, which then could improve, increase copper prices. And so that's kind of the dynamic that right now is in play, and that's kind of, a, in a way, what kind of drew me to the stock, um, was this potential for copper prices to rebound, because the copper prices have been kind of depressed over the last couple of years. So there are risks associated with it, and you kind of have to be aware with them as you're playing it out. So is the stock cheap? And that's ultimately what it comes down to. It seems like it's a great company, and it's, making, you know, it's a, it's a best-of-breed copper-producing company. But at the end of the day, is the stock cheap? And so the stock is, you know, for the most while, has been trading in the 50s, and it's now kind of now trading in the low 30s, and that's really what piqued my interest in it. Um, when you look at the valuations on the stock, if you look at it on a relative valuation, it's pretty pricey when you look at it multiples. It's trading at 17 times forward earnings. Um, you know, and the industry average is around nine times. If you're looking at it from a discounted cash flow perspective, um, the stock seems to be valued in a range between 40 and $51. And so if you were looking at that perspective, it looks cheap given the stock is trading right now in the 30s. So when you put all these elements together, it's the best of breed copper producer. It's making money in a, it's demonstrated it's, it can make money in a depressed market. It's producing a good and a material that is very much in demand and is, appears to be in a growing demand because they expect demand for this product, to, for copper to be actually increasing. It's making money. It's in a financially strong position. It seems to be operating in an environment which may be more conducive for copper prices to go up. The fact that the stock is selling at a discount, when I put all these elements together, that led me to decide, you know what, this might be a really good time to buy the stock. And so ultimately it led to my decision to buy the stock. So I dumped, uh, decided to come in and build up a small position. And if prices were to fall a little bit more, I'd be happy to buy some more, uh, more stock in the future. So that's my mind map analysis of my decision to buy Southern Copper Company. If you're interested in other videos and podcasts and uh, blog posts that I do on various companies and all things investing, you can jump on my website, sageinvestors.ca, and uh, drop me a line if you're interested in any of my coaching programs and investing courses that I do teach. So thank you very much for listening in, watching in. My name is Amon Reina of Sage Investors. Take care. Bye-bye.